covered with elegant fabric, but did you realize it's a project that you can easily do yourself? You'll be surprised at how easy it really is. We'll be back. Just three easy steps is all it takes. And you have a beautifully upholstered wall with fabric. Stay tuned and we'll show you how to do it. Right now we're going to take a look at how easy it is to use some material instead of wallpaper on your walls. Home interior designer Diane Johnson used this idea in her Victorian home. She's remodeling in Waxahachie. You know, we've been following her along. Right now she's going to show you how to add that elegant touch. of this house. As you can see, we already have the wallpaper on. It's a beautiful twall. I've decided to put wall upholstery on the lower part of the wall using fabric. You're going to need a list of things if you decide you want to do this in your home. You're going to have to have a hot glue gun and a cutting knife and scissors, a staple gun with lots of staples. Remember to have lots of staples. A tape measure is essential, and also you have to have a hammer. Every once in a while you have a staple that just won't go in. put the fabric on. This is the fabric I've selected to go on the wall and you have to have batting to go underneath it. What I usually do is split the batting. That way you get twice the fabric for your money. But also it keeps it from being quite so puffy. It's a great insulator and a great sound barrier for music rooms, playrooms, and media rooms. So keep that in mind. We're going to start putting the batting on the wall with a staple gun. It doesn't make any difference if it's real and even, if it doesn't make any difference, if it isn't all exactly the same thickness, because the fabric will be covering it up. When you get to a corner, you just have to get as close as you can. This is where your hammer comes in handy. You may have to come back with your hammer and just tack some of those down a little bit tighter. Your scissors come in handy for all these raw edges. Sometimes you can't get to the baseboard very easily, so you have to turn your staple gun upside down to try to get it as tight as you can. You notice that I'm rubbing this occasionally, trying to get it smoothed down, getting it as tight as I can without stretching the batting too much. We have the batting all applied. Now we're putting on the fabric. I want you to notice right here that if you can see that seam, you will have seams and you need to sew that together, making sure that you match your pattern perfectly. Make sure that you get your fabric lined up carefully. Once we get the top part done, don't pull the fabric very hard. If you pull it hard, you're going to stretch that line and you're not going to get a smooth, straight piece of fabric. And with a stripe, it's critically important. You may have to just put a staple over in the corner just to hold it in place until you get through. Look back at it to see how straight it looks. If it needs to be pulled a little tighter, do it again. Put a temporary staple in there to hold it in place. Start down at the bottom now. Rub down, rubbing to make sure that your stripe is straight. Rub the fabric down to make sure it's taut. You don't want any wrinkles in that fabric. Once you've got all the lower staples in, you need to take your cutting knife and cut out any of the scraps that are left across the bottom. You're not going to hurt your woodwork because you're cutting deeply enough and far enough back and also your trim is going to be hiding it. You can do one of two things to give a finished edge here. I'm using upholstery gimp. This is a very easy thing to come by. You can buy it at any department store, any fabric store. You put it on with a hot glue gun. You can also use the same fabric and have it made into a cord or you can use a contrasting cord. Just make sure that you keep your line as straight as possible. With the hot glue gun, it's a very easy application. You just want to make sure that you pat it all in so that your glue is sticking well. But don't put so much glue on there 
that it's going to actually come down into your fabric and drip on your wall. Be careful not to burn your fingers. It is very hot. There you have it. Three easy steps and you have an upholstered wall. Isn't that beautiful? Next week we're going to do something in the kitchen. The cabinets are in and we're going to crackle the walls. Make sure you check back with us. See you then. Thank you.